I'm looking up how to play ball belly in a way that is not ugly, okay? Leave me alone. Wait, how annoyed would you guys be if I actually burnt the ball belly right now? <laughs> 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 Right. <laughs> so for the next two minutes, I will talk about nothing. Are you seeing this? Are you, are you watching him? I'm just gonna take a moment because I'm so happy right now. Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Yeah. Oh, I just fall. Amy! Oh my God, that looks so sexy. So excited. Silly. Chili, the chili's hot. Chili's hot. Mm. The chili's really hot. I'm so happy with that. Hello. Um, so today I'm going to show you guys how to make crackling pork belly. The video is totally brought to you by Uniqlo, which is what I'm wearing today. But just before I do that, I'm going to get into my house shoes, because we are in a Vietnamese household. Um, so I've got the ultra light down on, which I'm obsessed with, seeing as it is coming into winter, and it's getting quite cold in Melbourne. Um, so it's great. It's a great piece for layering. It's all about layering, really. Um, we're talking about basics, and I wear their clothes all the time because it's perfect for putting together. Um, I'm just going to pop that there. I don't know who that is. Um, thanks, to thanks to Uniqlo, we've got a whole team with us today. Um, so we've got a couple of cameras. There's some lighting things. I've put my jacket on one of those lighting things that I don't really understand what it does. And I've got um, my makeup artist, obviously, who's to make this happen. I'm not a makeup artist. Your sister. Why did you just ruin that? I'm just going to go upstairs. <laughs> okay, we're back. Anyway, so we've got the bum bag, which I'm always obsessed with. You all know that I love a bum bag. There's also a little wool knit that I've got on, which is really warm. Perfect. But I'm not going to cook in it because I feel as though I'm really grubby and I'm going to get it dirty. And that's not kind of the goal today. <laughs> So I'm going to put this aside. So, crackling pork belly. But before we get started, I'm going to tie my hair up and wash my hands. <laughs> All right, hands are washed. Um, I went shopping today. We've got some coriander, some radishes, oh, and some cucumbers, just for a little bit of a side salad a little bit later. And this guy, the pork belly. Sexy. Gorge. So, pork belly, what you're looking for is a piece that's relatively kind of uniform in shape. You don't want a side to be too high and another side to be too low because if you do that, it ends up cooking unevenly and you don't get that really nice crackling that you would want. So with the pork, what you want to do, I know a lot of people like to dry their pork out overnight. If you've got time for it, do it. I usually just buy the pork on the day that I want to eat it, so there's no time to do that. Um, people also like to put a whole bunch of salt on top, but this technique always works for me. So I'm just going to do it the same way that I always do it. So you just want to grab a knife, something pointy, and you want to kind of poke little holes in the skin. The reason that we do that is because it stops the skin from puffing up. It might still do it, you never know. You don't want to go too hard. You don't want to break um, through the fat and through the meat because what happens when you're cooking it is some of that liquid and some of that moisture from the pork will come out of those holes and it will cause little bits where it won't puff. So you want to pierce the skin but not go all the way through to the fat and the meat. All right. I'm pretty sure I've stabbed the pork enough. I can move on. Um, once that's done, what I like to do is flip it over. Look, you don't have to do this. Sometimes I don't, but I like the flavor to be, not just be all about the crackling. I want the pork to have a nice flavoring on the, on the bottom. So today I've got some five spice, heves. I'm going to put a nice pinch of salt through there. You don't need to put too much in. I'm using salt flakes. And what you want to do is then rub it onto the bottom and also a little bit of the side 
of the pork. When I get to this point, the bottom's all covered, I just kind of lift that pork up and kind of dab it <laughs> with the leftover seasoning that's kind of off the piece of parchment paper. All right, so that's basically the pork done and now we just have to prep it to go into the oven. Oh, I almost forgot. I've got to turn the oven on. <laughs> um, guys, really important to preheat your oven. So I do it at 180 because I want to eat this as fast as possible. So I want the cooking time to kind of reduce a little bit. But if it's a really slow day and I'm just chilling out, doing whatever I want to, then I would put it in at maybe like 150, 160 and leave it in there for like two, three hours and just let it just chill and then crank it at the end to get that nice crackling on top. So today, 180. All right, so I'm just gonna grab a sheet of foil and also some baking paper. I'll explain to you why you need both in a second. Oh my God, this never closes. All right, I've got a little sheet pan here. This is gonna sit in there. So the reason that I've got foil and the paper is when you do the foil it kind of holds its shape and it protects the outer layer of the pork and so it doesn't burn the spices don't burn but usually I find that the fat because it renders out gets caught in the foil and then the pork gets stuck to the foil it doesn't happen when you have a sheet of baking paper on it as well so I usually do both all you want to do here you want to fold the edges so that it protects the side so you want it really tight around that pork but making sure that we have the baking paper touching the pork. Just really snug, you know? Um, all right, so the pork is snug, cute. Chuck it right on the baking sheet pan. I don't know what that actually is called. We're gonna get some more salt. Um, I don't use the salt flakes for this because you kind of want it to draw a little bit of the moisture out. A lot of people do do the whole crust, but this works without doing the crust. I just don't understand why we always do it. I know it's the proper way, but I don't do it. I don't know. We're gonna give it a little bit of a dusting. Um, I'll talk about quantities underneath, but this is probably about a tablespoon, maybe one and a half tablespoons. So you just want the whole thing to be covered. It's actually feeling pretty dry, which is surprising because I just got it. Um, and that's enough. What this does is it draws the moisture out of the pork while it's cooking so the skin has a chance to kind of crisp up but saying that if you're cooking the pork for an hour an hour and 20 minutes depending on the size of your pork and then cranking it it's going to puff up no matter what don't be worried about it don't be scared always works um, it's all about adjusting though so keep an eye on the pork as soon as you see that it's cooked so poke it if it's looking nice and delicious but it's not puffed yet crank the heat up to about 240 250 put it on the lowest tray in your oven for an extra 20 minutes and watch as it starts to crackle. All right, the oven is at temperature, so I'm just gonna chuck it right in, middle tray. You don't want it to be too low, you don't want it to be too high, so yeah, that tray works. We're just gonna leave it in there for about an hour and then I'll check on it. What time is it? Cool, an hour's time, we'll come back and have a look. So I've obviously been sitting here for about 35 minutes because um, I'm a psychopath and I just want to make sure that my pork is fine. Staring into the oven, it's looking good. So at around the 35 minute mark, what I like to do is pull that pork out a tiny bit and just wipe that salt off the top. Yum! Nice, so as you can see, the pork's shrunk a little bit. So I like to, Utensils, utensils, utensils. What I like to do is start to crumple it back in just to protect that side again. Because you, you don't want the outside of the pork to burn. Wipe that off. See ya. Don't need you anymore. You're great. But we're moving on. Um, I do turn my pork as well at around this point just because most ovens are not even all the way round. Because it would have been so much easier if I just freaking turned the tray instead of turning the whole piece of pork. But sure, let's make life harder. Um, yeah, protect the sides. 
Got rid of the salt, put it back in, another 30 minutes. Takes us about to the hour mark, and then we'll check on it. So it's been about an hour and 15 minutes. It took a little bit longer, probably because the piece of meat is a little bit bigger. Um, you'll have all of the actual recipes underneath the video. Okay, sexy. Look at that pork. Get in tight, get in real tight. Alright, so what you want is this squishy, like look how soft that looks, gorge. And it's time to puff. So what I'm going to do is grab this tea towel and move the pork down to the bottom row. Or shelf, or whatever you want to call it, I don't care. Um, really easy. Close that up, put it on the grill. Um, keep an eye on it. Like, you really need to keep an eye on it. But while that's happening, I'm just going to move on to my salad. The pork is starting to crack away. It's on the bottom layer because what happens is if you put it too close to the broiler, it burns the skin. If you put it at the bottom, it starts to crackle, get golden really nice, but it doesn't burn it. So that's going to be in there for about 20 minutes or so. Um, I will check it on every seven, eight minutes, um, five minutes, whatever. I'm just going to keep checking on it because it freaks me out when that pork's in there. Let's get started on the salad. Really simple. Cucumber, radishes, coriander, and then I've got anuk mum, which I've I always have in the fridge. I'm not going to show you guys how to make it today. If you want to see how to make it, there's going to be a recipe that goes up. Click on that, have a look, and I'll show you how to make a traditional look, mum. First, got to wash this, but I need a bowl. Can I have a bowl? Thanks. <laughs> not ready, and the bowl's on the other side because this is mum's kitchen and she does weird things like put mixing bowls on the other side. Anyway, that's for my salad. Gonna wash some of the cukes. Cute. All you want to do is, I don't really care about the ends. If you do, then get rid of them. But you just want to cut them all random and weird shapes because it's nice. It's quite lovely to have that, all the different textures. Um, sometimes what I do is I'll cut some and keep them whole like that. And other ones I would just crush with the side of my knife. So I just give them a little crush. So this releases the juice in the cucumber and when the dressing goes on it, it kind of mixes in and it becomes really nice, really refreshing, really gorgeous. I said refreshing about 15 times now, but that's okay. <laughs> Gorge. All right, so that's all done. That goes in there, so simple. Same thing with the radishes. All right, top and tail. Top, tail or tail top. Just gonna run them across the mandolin. Curry, a lot of curry. I'm gonna probably do, I'm gonna save a little bit for garnish. So I'm gonna just not use that and we'll deal with that later. But this guy, heaven. This, so full of flavor, absolutely delicious. Don't throw it away. Put it into a little container or whatever. Save it for your curry paces. Save it for your broth. Save it for stocks. It's so full of flavor and it's absolutely delicious. But people always throw this away. Don't. So you just want a little rough chop, nothing too crazy. You don't want it too fine because you want to see those beautiful leaves of the curry mixed through the salad. And now my fingers are full of coriander. <laughs> so salad's done. Usually I would dress it just before serving. So I'm not going to dress it now, but I will pull out the dressing so you guys see it. It always lives in my fridge. You are not allowed in my fridge today because it's actually a mess in there. The sauce, the nook mum. Um, Nook mum is a sauce that's used in 150,000 different dishes in Vietnamese cooking. It is so packed full of flavor. It's delicious. I'm in love with it. Um, so the story is when you're a mum and your son starts dating someone, you will not be accepted into that family unless the daughter is able to make a really good nook mum. It's like the, it's a, it's a whole Vietnamese thing. Like you get judged on your new mum to marry someone's son. Don't think that's really true, but it's a cute little story. Um, cool, what do I do now? Cause I'm done. <laughs> Um, salad's there, nook mum is there, ready to be dressed. Um, the pork is cooking away, but I'm just gonna chill out for a bit. Um, maybe take some selfies of my outfit. <laughs> I don't know what to do here. I'm looking up how to play more belly in a way that is not ugly, okay? Leave me alone. 
Oh yes, that brown board. That's why I asked mum for it the other night. Where is that brown board? Amy! Oh. <laughs> what sink? If for those who are playing at home, Amy is my sister. Also my makeup artist, even though she doesn't want to pretend to be my makeup artist. What is this? Like, what are we doing right now? This is cute. Let's do this one. Little bit of a trick. I scrunch up baking paper before I put it down if I want to put things on it because it seems to sit better. And it holds liquid in and it does all the cute things that baking paper is supposed to do. Nook mum, pour it over. Gonna check on that pork. Yeah. Oh, I just swore. Oh my god. As you can see, it's puffing up really nicely. It's looking real sexy. I'm really proud of it. This part will burn. This part will 100% burn. So to stop that from happening, what I'm gonna do is make the other side a little bit higher. This is a trick that no one ever talks about, and I don't understand why. It's like help people, like. Let them know the inside tricks. So what I do is I actually will lift this up a tiny bit. Probably not with my hands because that hurts. And what that does now is it makes this side more elevated. So that will come down. So this will continue to puff because it's closer to the broiler and that side probably won't burn. We're gonna leave it from another to hot, hot. Oh my God. Okay. Don't wear jewelry near your oven because the heat actually heats up the jewelry and it burns you. Um, so I'm just gonna pop that in for another two, probably two or three minutes. It's pretty much already done. We just want it to get real nice and crispy and crackly at the top. So, oh my God, that looks so sexy. So excited. Anyone at home would be pretty happy with how this pork belly looks and you would probably just pull it out now. Um, but I can still see a couple of bits that aren't fully crackled and because I'm a psychopath I'm just gonna put it in for another two minutes and hopefully that doesn't burn it Fingers crossed So for the next two minutes, I will talk about nothing <laughs> Wait, no, but do you know what? Seeing as I'm standing here for two minutes Do you like this color? Like I chose this and it is so comfortable It's like so comfy, but color it's all about color, how it looks, right? Um, another minute, just one more. That may have been like the longest two minutes of my life, but I'm pretty sure that pork should be ready. It hasn't burned. I think it's perfect. Oh my God, why are you so sexy? Oh my God, all that smoke got in my eye. Okay, so, um, resting for a piece of pork like this. I'm gonna tell you to rest it for like 15, 20 minutes. I don't because I'm really impatient and I'll probably, as soon as I can touch it, oh look, I can touch it. I'll probably cut into it, meaning I'm gonna cut into it. We've rested it for like 15 minutes. <laughs> we actually haven't, we've rested it for like five minutes. Um, but I'm really impatient. Please rest your pork belly. I'm not doing it because I just want to get this done because I'm hungry and I want to eat it. But this is when I would take this off and just like die of happiness. Now, the best way to cut... The best way to talk to camera is not with your back to camera. Um, <laughs> the best way to cut a piece of pork belly, serrated knife. I want to slice. Okay, I really want to slice. I, I can slice? Yeah. Cool. I'm going to slice. Why is this so sexual? Like that. That is just so... Can't, like... Can you hear that? Are you listening? ASMR. <laughs> you know how comforting that is? Listening to that pork, watching that steam. Comfort. I'm pretty sure I nailed this brief, by the way. All right, so 
Apron needs to go on. I don't know how aprons really work. Apron's on. I don't want to get all the juices all over me. If you rest your pork, there's less chance of there being juices flying out everywhere. But seeing as I didn't do that, that's the reason why I now have to put this apron on. This is the fun part. I love doing this, especially when I'm angry. Gorge. And see this piece, how it popped off? That's God's telling me, well, higher powers telling me that that's my piece. And I get to eat that. <laughs> All right, so part of my fingers, we're gonna try this. Oh shit. Horrible. <laughs> mm. That is so yum. Let's do some garnishes to finish. A little bit of chili. That there is my comfy, simple, basic um, crispy pork belly with the cucumber and radish salad with Nook Mum. Um, I think that I've nailed this brief, and hopefully, you guys will give this a go at home. Oh my God, this is heavy. This is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys can eat this. I'm gonna go take some photos of myself in the clothes. Bye. This dish, just like my Uniqlo outfit, it's all about layering some basics and some really simple things to make something absolutely delicious and great. Yum. Ooh, crunchy. Mm. Hot chili. Chili, chili's hot. Chili's hot. Mm. The chili's really hot. Oh my God, that chili's really hot. Why did I eat the chili? I can't believe how hot the chili was.